Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Thursday, sort of lunchtime here in Australia, and the market has bounced back quite nicely. So, you know, maybe we are in that SOS phase of the uh, Wyckoff accumulation. You know, we'll still have to wait and see, but things are looking good. But we need to remember in that. Uh, SOS stage of the Wyckoff accumulation, it chops around a little bit for a while. So we might see some choppiness for you know a couple of days, maybe a week or so. We don't know exactly how long. But let's have a look at what the market's telling us. So 1.65 trillion, up 4.4%. Quite nice. Bitcoin dominance dropping again. Whew. But the price, it's looking pretty juicy and other things are starting to fire. But have a look at the Ethereum gas fees. They are really starting to move. And is that uh, a precursor to, you know, ETH 2.0 that's supposed to roll out at sort of uh, midnight, I think USA time tonight. I'm not exactly sure what time, but uh, actually, no, I think it got pushed back. I think it's pushed back till tomorrow, if I remember correctly. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see again whether that's really going to make a difference. You know, if you're sending, you know, $100, 200 $300, you can probably tolerate, you know, paying a 2% sort of fee. That's not so bad. But if you're sending $5 and it's costing you $2 to send $5, well, that's why it's just not going to work. So we're going to have to wait and see there. And there is some, you know, skepticism about whether, you know, EIP, uh, EIP 1559 will really change a whole lot. You know, I guess we're going to have to wait sort of 48 hours to find out. But anyway, let's have a look. It's looking pretty green. And again, as the market is up 4.4%, you'd expect that sort of green almost everywhere. So let's have a look. What's performed the best out of the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Oh, BitTorrent, nice move. All right, 17%, 17.5%. Compound, 16%. Aave, very nice. Voyager token's been on an absolute rip tear since uh, news got out that it bought uh, that exchange. Uh, and uh Rune, Thorchain, again, making a nice comeback. So, you know, maybe, you know, the two hacks within a week aren't enough to kind of scare people out. You know, that's both good and bad. Good that it hasn't scared them out, but bad that it happened. But, you know, that's not to say that that'll be the end of them. It could, you know, only make them stronger. You know, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not, you know, running out to buy a whole stack of uh, Rune at the moment, but that's just me. Again, I'm never offering financial advice. Polka dot about time starting to make some move. This was really lagging behind. Uniswap doing all right. Solana, look, we got a ton of really good gains. Even Tron, far out. I haven't heard of Tron in a really long time. And Ethereum, 8%. So very nice. What about losses though in the top 100? We know that things have been moving pretty well. Obviously, the market's up 4 plus percent. So there we go. A couple of losses, perp protocols down, CELOs down. But I mean, these are really tiny losses. And again, uh, Content Value Network, not sure what's going on there, but they have been sort of going down for a while. Bit of choppy action, but generally sort of on a downtrend. So some nice gains, uh, you know, again, we want 15 plus percent 24 hours. For me, at least, that's what I consider a good gain. Uh, there was only one or two there in the gains. But look, any gain's a good gain. Well, a, a good gain. Any gain <laughs> is a good gain. You know, we've got three that are 15% and above, one that's really almost there, Voyager taken. And then again, any gain's a good gain. We'll take it any time. But, you know, that 15 plus percent in 24 hours is, you know, what I consider a good gain. But what you also need to remember is when a coin pumps like this, there's usually going to be a red day uh, in the not too distant future. Now, again, not always and nothing I offer is financial advice, but if you're thinking, God, I reckon I've missed these coins, maybe just give it 24, 48 hours, you might see a pullback. I'm not saying they'll lose all of these gains, but they may lose sort of half of those gains, not half the price of the token, half of these gains. But again, you'll just have to make uh, sense of that yourself. So the market's looking pretty nice. Something interesting happening on the Bitcoin chart. Let's go and have a look. So we can see, again, the SOS stage is basically, it should chop around here a couple of times. Now again, that may kind of play out over sort of a week or so, but basically when you put the Wyckoff accumulation, there was the spring, uh, then it came up and it's supposed to go up and down, up and down a couple of times before it starts to make its way back up. Now again, it's not going to play out exactly the same way that you're, you know, seeing the Wyckoff accumulation chart. It's just going to play out similar. And at the moment, you know, it, it looks like it could be doing that. Again, it went up, 
had the pullback. We got the green. This is still very early for this candle. This could easily uh, be green again or maybe red. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same. But according to the Wyckoff accumulation chart, we should be chopping around a little bit before we then start to make our way back up. So very, very interesting. And look, it held up. I was wondering if we were going to come down to this kind of $36,000, $37,000 mark thereabouts. It's been holding quite nicely so far. But what was interesting is we got a clean rejection from getting back into this long-term uptrend that we're in. So I am waiting to see whether you know this will just be invalidated and we'll have to start a new one at some stage, or is Bitcoin going to make it back up into this chart and continue following this, at least until this bull run is over. That'll be very, very interesting. But look, this may be negated and I may have to pull that back to sort of around about here and then a new one may have to start that, you know, maybe goes even steeper or something. We'll have to wait and see. But again, watch for a bit of choppiness over the next kind of couple of days to a week if this is to follow that Wyckoff accumulation chart before we start to head back up. Now, some interesting stories. So I said yesterday, Gary Gensler, you know, he came out and said that he believes most, actually, I think he said all ICOs are, you know, securities uh, and need to be sort of, you know, probably pay some fines and all the rest of it. And so I thought he was really against Bitcoin. And I found that interesting considering he used to work at MIT and, you know, did uh, lectures on cryptocurrencies. But some more information has come out. So the takeaway from basically everything that he said is this. Some, uh, the takeaway for some was that Gensler would continue focusing on deceptive shit coins, a likely net positive for the industry. So that's true. You know, there is a lot of shit coins out there, unfortunately. I think there's over 10,000 coins out there. I think you'd be lucky to have 100 really, really good ones. Uh, and that's the honest truth, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. I think a majority of the coins out there don't have the teams behind them. It's just, you know, one or two, maybe three coders that got together and just, you know, had some potluck at having a crack. And some of those might actually turn into really good projects. But most of them are just absolute rubbish and garbage uh, and are a waste of time putting your money into. But again, I need to say this, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. And I actually have no problems if they go through and really clean up the industry, getting rid of, and again, i.e. the shit coins. I don't mind that at all. There's a number of, you know, we'll stop calling it that. We'll call them, you know, no good coins. And they do need to be gone. We don't need those kind of things. That obviously needs to go. But this I found very interesting. Gary Gensler himself appeared to draw a moat around Bitcoin in the remarks saying that after his time researching cryptocurrency at MIT, I came to believe that though there was a lot of hype masquerading as reality in the crypto field, Satoshi Nakamoto's innovation is real. Further, it has been and could continue to be a catalyst for change in the fields of finance and money. Gary Gensler is a Bitcoin bull, ladies and gentlemen. I, I was so glad when I read this because I remember seeing clips of him from ages ago, you know, teaching at MIT and talking about cryptocurrency. And so I was hopeful that he was going to come and be good for the space. And then I read that article and I was like, oh, God, he's going to, you know, try and say that every ICO is uh, a, a, a unregulated security. And look, even if that's the case and he does that, a lot of them may well be, that doesn't mean they die and go away. They just obviously have to pay a fine and then maybe they can continue. But also, it'll just get rid of the shit ones and the scam ones and they'll be able to go after the people who literally just rip people off. But it does seem like Gary Gensler, he's like he's into Bitcoin. So I, I get the feeling an ETF uh, is guaranteed under his leadership. He He's obviously, you know, crypto positive but he obviously knows there's again as he said a lot of crap coins out there a lot of dodgy ones that obviously need to you know be knocked on the head you know i don't know how else you know, how nice a way to say that without sort of getting nasty all right we talked yesterday about uh or i spoke yesterday about venezuela wanting to use uh, cryptocurrency as a payment method. Well, a senator from Uruguay has introduced a bill to allow businesses to accept cryptocurrencies as payments and regulate their use with the South American country. 
Now, we can go over here. It wasn't just Uruguay. It's also Colombia. So senators in Uruguay and Colombia have introduced, introduced bills with the goal of creating a safer Bitcoin market in their country. So it really does feel like South America, they are kind of leading the way at the moment for adopting it as currency. Obviously, you know, uh, they're the countries that will probably do the best from it provided it goes well unfortunately if it goes really bad it won't help their uh you know countries at all it'll probably be quite bad for them but you know i, I don't see that happening particularly with bitcoin anyway other cryptocurrencies we have to wait and see but it seems like south america is getting on the front foot and i think you know if they can get into it nice and early and get the mining going and using it as you know not so much bitcoin i don't think bitcoin's going to be used too much as a a form of currency but i do think it's going to be used as a, a store of value and you know you can trade for things you know i don't think people are going to go to shops and buy you know milk and bread and things like that with bitcoin at least not on the grand scale there might be a few little places that do it and i know there are little places now that are doing it but you know interesting you know el salvador you know they obviously led the way and now these other south american countries are going to follow and you just watch if it works really well for them and they implement it and there's no real kind of you know major hiccups and uh you know economic sort of catastrophes uh for these countries it won't be long until some sort of first world nation country gets on board it'll just be interesting to see which one and particularly if it ends up being the usa because they are the most crypto ready according to surveys that we looked at a while ago they could be the first big uh the yeah the first of the first world nations to get on board uh, and adopt it again i don't think as a currency but just really put it into their financial systems and you know country uh their government may even you know use it to store some wealth and things like that that would not surprise me so we'll have to keep a look out for that all right the world's largest crypto asset manager has hired a new executive to strengthen its aspirations to launch a Bitcoin ETF. So this is Grayscale, and they have appointed David, hopefully I'll say his name right, Laval, I've probably said that wrong and butchered it, I apologize, a former executive at Alarian and S Network Global Indexes to help the company on its way to having Bitcoin ETF approved in the United States. I get the feeling like Grayscale may be one of the first ones. They're doing a lot of work. They weren't one of the first ones to put the, you know, the ETF uh, to the SEC and things like that, but they may be the first uh, to get one across the board. But it won't be one like ETF. You know, there's I think thirty something different gold ETFs. So there'll be a number of Bitcoin ETFs, but maybe Grayscale is going to be the first one. They are the biggest and hold the most amount of Bitcoin. I, I think they hold more Bitcoin than anyone except for, you know, some of the original Satoshi Nakamoto wallets, which haven't been touched in a really long time, basically almost since its existence. So we'll have to wait and see. And last but not least, this, this surprised me, but I am so glad it seems to be working well at the moment. Acon's Acoin pilot is heralded a success and eyes countrywide rollout in Kenya. MMTC founder Julius, uh, again, hopefully I don't butcher this name, Mawale and Acon are expected to be in attendance at next month's major launch event that will unveil Acoin's national rollout across Kenya. The pilot, which began in November 2020, is expected to pave the way for $5 million worth of transactions per month. Full implementation is expected to begin in September and monthly transactions are projected to surge, possibly reaching $2 billion by 2022. I mean, that is quick. And this will be interesting. If this really takes off and does extremely well, then again, we were speaking about the Miami coin, or I was speaking about the Miami coin yesterday things could start to move really fast but it, look in all fairness i don't they they're going to move fast in the terms of crypto not fast in the terms of the overall i still don't think we're anywhere near sort of global mass adoption i don't think that's going to come you know this bull run i don't even think it'll come in the next bull run if our bull runs continue to play out that way i still think we're probably around about a decade away from you know you know true mass adoption where basically everyone in the world is using cryptocurrencies oh, um, you know that could still be 20 30 years away who knows because there's going to be people that are you know 
just going to be very apprehensive and aren't going to want to jump on board. It'll be the big early adopters first, i.e., you know, banks, countries, governments, and people like you and me, the early adopters. But as for the general public, they may take a while to uh, really get on board. And we have to see cryptocurrency stress tested. And that's why we need the big institutions. How does the cryptocurrency and blockchain hold up against, you know, you know, number one, a lot of transactions happening at one time and just big transactions. We've already seen Bitcoin in the last bull run have, you know, the transaction fees were like $50 and it would take hours for, you know, the transactions to happen. So we've got to wait and see if Lightning Network can roll out and really kind of help solve things like that. You know, again, we need to wait and see if, you know, Ethereum can, you know, handle all that, the ETH 2.0 rollout, you know, plus all the layer twos. There's so much that needs to happen before we really get to that, you know, the, at least the possibility of, you know, mass worldwide adoption. So for me, I think we're probably still about a decade away from it. But what that also says to me is that we're still early. We haven't seen the mass rollout yet. We haven't even seen the real inflection point where it really starts to take off. We're in the first part of that curve where it's starting to move up super, super early. Now, again, just my personal opinion, not my fin not financial advice. All right. So as I said before, I'll finish up. That's pretty much it. I think we're going to see some choppy action around here for a while, probably, you know, between 42,000 and again, getting down to around about 36,000, 37,000 thereabouts. And it's not to say it has to come down and then hit the top and come down and then hit the top. It could be just sort of all around here before we finally mount, uh, start to make our way up now. It is Thursday afternoon, sort of here in Australia, lunchtime, early afternoon. Obviously, that means the weekend's almost upon us, and we have traditionally seen weekend pullbacks, but there has been a number of just, what was that, 10 days in a row. So there's a CME gap somewhere in here that I'm not sure if it's been covered yet. I'll have to go back and check the, the charts, and we'll check for that next time. But that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Things are looking pretty good, and hopefully, you know, most of you are on that gain train, and I'll see you next time.